Pinky is a douce, respectable town. Notable for its equable climate and for the bracing quality of its sea air. We have never gone in for brash advertising in Bakey. It has always been felt that the attractions of the town speak for themselves. Foremost among these attractions are the waters of the Bakey Spa. For a hundred years, discerning visitors have gained much benefit from their medical properties. Mohammed has been in the habit, so to speak, of coming to the mountain. We propose to change that. Times are hard, rates and unemployment are rising. So the forward-thinking members of the governing board of the spa recently came to the conclusion that we should capitalize upon this valuable asset. They provided substantial funds with which to set up this enterprise to make Bakey water more widely available. Mainly in the interests of the health of the general public, of course. But there is no doubt that the advantages accruing to the town will be considerable. Bottled in Bakey, the Vichy of the North, Vichy of the North. will become a catchphrase. It is therefore with confidence in our future prosperity that I now set this project in motion. Best to stop. It'll soon be better with that. Good night. Good night. Ah, that's it then, Captain. We're taking a dram then, Tom. Oh, damn it, not tonight. I have people waiting. Okay, I'll look in tomorrow. No, come up to the house. You want to see Peggy, don't you? You'll get your tea. That sounds like a good idea. And you'll get a dram as well. well that's even a better idea. Right, shut the shop. just finished his surgery, but it shouldn't be too long. We're in the garden, actually. God, there's folk waiting for him already. Tom's too easy. His hours are stated on the door. People should keep to them. So should he. He makes appointments to see folk and then leaves me to cover up for him when he's late. Exactly. <sighs> you know Mr. Houston, don't you? Good evening, Provost. John Mr. Carmichael. Evening, Provost. The big key advertiser here in strength, I see. <laughs> a social call, I presume? No, not exactly. We just wanted to wee chat about an article your brother wrote some time ago. About the spa. This seemed an opportune moment. Uh, can I get you something to drink, Peter? Eh, no. No, thank you. It's a little early for me. 
Jet. Uh, just a wee one, please. Oh, right, thank you. Sorry you're having such a wait, but I'm sure Tom will not be long now. My brother's getting to be one of your regular contributors, I notice, Mr. Houston. Yeah, well, very glad to have him. Thank you. Tends to be a little outspoken at times. Thank you. He has the knack of putting his finger on a home truth, yes. Um, would you excuse me just for a minute? I suppose his lively style would appeal to you, readers. Though, of course, I've no ill will against your paper. It's excellent in its way. Thank you, Provost. Ah, there's room for everything. That's one of the admirable characteristics of this community of ours. The spirit of toleration, coupled with a willingness to move with the times. Like bottling the spa water. Exactly. Look at us. We used to be just a quiet little seaside town, but not now. People are beginning to know the name of Bakey. They see the name of the town and the label of the bottle and want to visit the place where it's made. House and property values are going up. This is not to be quoted, but we could be the only council not to increase its rates. Better get two bottles. Goodness knows how much longer your father's going to be. <laughs> oh, and Peggy, get a couple of packets of crisps, you know, nibbling things. Otherwise, there'll be no fit state to talk to him when he does come in. Have you seen the most recent unemployment figures? Tourism and the bottling plant will reduce them to the lowest in this part of Scotland. We'll be featuring that in our next issue, alongside your brother's article. Yes, I believe you said it was composed some time ago. Yes, it was published originally in a technical journal. This will be a simplified version for the general public. All about the therapeutic value of the water. <laughs> Tom's quite a fanatic where the spa's concerned. So he should be, Catherine. He draws a generous fee as technical advisor. Well, they do say he was the driving force behind it, Provost. Do they? Any mention of the work put in by the board of directors? Nobody would deny you've all put a lot into it, Peter, least of all Tom. It was Without the board who initiated the bottling project, after all. Were you aware that Thomas wasn't too keen on it? No. Oh. How my grounds? Oh, his argument was somewhat vague. It was something to do with the balance of nature. I fail to see the connection myself. I'm afraid when it comes to practical matters, my brother's not exactly gifted with commercial foresight. I'm surprised to find you open so late, Tom. If I wait till after surgery, it means they start getting better 12 hours earlier, with very little effort on my part. Can it turn sick folk away? I hope the news hands have left some tonic in the bottle. Huh? They must be outside. Ho, ho! The symbol of civic authority. I see we've got another distinguished guest. Aye, the provost? None other. In that case, Tom, I think I'll push on. Oh, not at all. The best thing about my brother's visits is their brevity. <laughs> Kate! Kate! The captain for a dram. Hello, Donald. Is that all that's left? Well, there's more coming. Peggy's bringing some. You might have known. That you'd be so late. Any letters? Well, there's bills by the look of them. Can you see them? We're on the hall table, dear. Donald? Brother Peter, David, Hello, John. John. Hey. Here, take that stuff neat, Donald. It's a good malt. We need strong young men like you around here to stir things up. And what, may one ask, needs stirring up in Bakey? Oh, well, promised. The best of broth deserves a good stir. That's a very peculiar remark. <laughs> Don't take it too literally for the minute. Mr. Houston tells me he's going to publish an article of yours. Oh, I? About the spa. Ah, uh, well, yes. Can he publish that just yet? Well, that's bad news. Why not? The town needs all the publicity it can get. In normal circumstances. What's abnormal about the present circumstances? Now, look, Peter, I cannot say anything definite Hello, about it. Tom. Excuse me. Is that the lock? Is there a telephone call for me from Glasgow? No. Uh. Well, it's a bit late now, but I might be able to say something more definite tomorrow. You see, there might be something very abnormal indeed, or I might just be imagining things. I simply do not know. Are you going to take a dram before you go? This sounds very mysterious, Thomas. Is it something I should know about? Look, Peter, I can't... I insist that all matters concerning the spa should be passed through the proper channels. I can allow no one to go behind our backs by Nobody roundabout means. Nobody is going behind your back. I'm not so sure. You have a pig-headed determination to go your own way. 
And that's not the way to do things in our well-ordered community. As for publishing anything about the Spa in a newspaper. I happen to own the newspaper, Provost. Mr. Carmichael's my editor. We'll write to publish I'm addressing my brother, Mr. But Houston. Nobody's publishing anything at the minute, so why don't you sit back and relax? Look, my wife assures me that our sadly diminished stocks of liquor are soon to be replenished, so you can join us in a dram. I don't feel like an evening's drinking. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was say offering you an evening's drinking, but please yourself. I shall. Gentlemen. Provost. <clears throat> Captain. Provost. I'll see you, madam. Good night, Captain. Oh, are you away, Peter? Bye-bye. I'm afraid he's not exactly in the best of moods, my brother-in-law. <laughs> He's a man who's used to getting his own way, I imagine. Oh, he is that. Perhaps the presence of the advertiser upset him. Oh, I don't think so. You seem to be getting on fine with him. <laughs> <laughs> An armed truce, Mrs. Stockman. The Provost and I are on opposite sides of the fence. Sure, there's nothing you ought to be telling me. Not just at the minute. I've warned you, Thomas. You can't say I haven't warned you. I was dying you about that either. <sighs> Catherine, are you sure there wasn't a telephone call for me from Glasgow? I'm quite sure. Couldn't have rung and nobody taken any notice. Oh, don't be silly. Well, it could happen quite easily in this house. Well, it didn't. All right, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. When are you sailing again, Captain? Oh, I've no idea. My ship's been laid up for two months, refitting. If there's another strike or a ghost, though, it could be the same again. That's the way things seem to go these days. Uh, dear, oh dear, Captain, that must be very frustrating. Tell me, how do you pass your time? Quite usefully, as it happens. My parents left me a great barracks of a house, so... Well, I had no use for it, so my sister turned it into a hotel. It's a good site. Ah, it's doing very well. At the moment, we're in the process of building a new extension. Oh. That'll be costing you a pretty penny, huh? If the anticipated tourist boom takes place, we'll all end up very rich. Or oh, I have no romantic notions of the sea. <laughs> you see before you a happy man. Ah, it looks like it, Tom. Sorry about the article, John. So am I. We'd like to have used it on Saturday. Oh. Ah, maybe it'll still be possible, but something I'll chat up first. I sympathize with Peter. It'd be very mysterious. I'm not going to rush into this one. That could be him. Hello, Peggy, you're late. That's the phone, Dad. So it is. Tom Stockman. Ah, Angus. Great. Well, better late than never. Just a minute. Right. Read it to me. Goodness, here. You take that out and hold the fort. Oh, who's all out there? Mr. Houston and John Carmichael from the advertiser. Oh, and someone else. Groom sulfate. Now, what would its toxic effect be in these quantities? No, no, no. I suppose it isn't your business, but it shouldn't be there at all. I. Uh, yes? Go on, please. Hi. Hello, Peggy. Well, here it is. Ah, Wonderful. Great. Long last. Thank you. Hello. Hello. You're late. Oh, Penn teacher's meeting on top of everything else. Oh, thank you. Not a good day, huh? Well, no worse than usual. It's the size of the class. I've got nearly 40 just now. 40? And thousands of teachers unemployed. Oh, well, quite. How do you control that many? Oh, I can control them all right. But I can't teach them. You see, they range from very bright to rather slow. I have to go at the pace of the slowest while the bright ones sit and get bored. That's well, not fair. And are the dull ones not entitled to as much consideration as the bright Miss Stockman? Well, you've completely missed the point. I was thinking of equalising upwards. I was just checking. Do you know what I'd like to do? I'd love to start a class in the evenings and give the slower ones the attention they need. In your own time? Oh, why not? Oh, if you're tired enough as it is. I'd be doing something useful. I don't think the provost or the town council would allow it. Never. Well, I could do it off my own back. But accommodation's the problem. There just isn't enough room here. Listen, that mightn't be such a problem. 
Yes, but I'm not just talking about two or three kids, you know, more like ten or twelve. Maybe we could find your room at the hotel. There you are. Could you? We'll see. This is going to make everybody sit up. Who? The whole population. Why? What is it? It's a discovery. Oh, help. Another one. It's a very interesting piece of scientific detection. Well, teach Peter to talk about my pig-headed determination to go my own way. What is it, dear? This is an analysis of the water of Bakey Spa. Generally considered to be of therapeutic value, invalids come here to drink it when they can afford to. And we're now stockpiling vast quantities of it to ship abroad and get ourselves a reputation of the Vichy of the North. Yes, we know all that, dear. Ah, but do you know what the waters of Bakey Spa really are? Yes, the medicinal They're waters. They're a slow poison. <laughs> I'm absurd. But perfectly true. Could you pour us a dram, dear? What gave you this idea? I've had a number of customers with similar illnesses. Now, I can tell by the prescriptions and by the look of them, jaundice for a start. So I began to think there was a toxic element, and I began to look for a common source. And I discovered that they'd all been regularly drinking spa water. Cheers. People have been taking it for years. I drawn it with a cup full fine. But now they're taking off vast quantities. And I believe that's affected the water table. That's the general level of water below the ground. I suppose that's possible. Well, what about it? Oh, the well is being forced to replenish itself from further and further afield. Mm -hmm. New constituents are seeping into it. Your brother said you were against the bottling plant from the start. Had you foreseen something like this happening? Oh, well, I warned him. If you start tinkering with the balance of nature, unexpected things are likely to happen. It now contains appreciable quantities of chrome sulphate. And my customers were suffering from chrome poisoning. My God. Uh, Any idea where it's coming from? Well, chrome sulphate's used in the tanning of leather, and the Dalhousie tannery is only four miles away. What? Uh, your father's tannery is the probable source. Well, I don't know what he'll say about that. But I'm sure it's a good thing that you've discovered it. Well, of course it is. Well, what can be done, Dad? It'll need to be sorted. Can it be sorted? I don't know. Can I use the spa in the meantime? But why did you not tell anybody about this before? Because I wanted an independent analysis. You came up bakey folk are like, they wouldn't believe me. Oh, still, I think you might have told us, your own family. Still, your grandfather should be the first to know. He'll be interested. It says tannery. I'll put a formal report into Peter. <laughs> he won't like it. I should think he'd be glad it's been brought to light. Tom, will you give us a piece for the advertiser? Two or three paragraphs, simple language. I don't see why not. It's a matter of public concern. Precisely. You know, of course, Tom, this will enhance your reputation even further. Your concern for the welfare of the people of this town is very refreshing. That's true, Dad. Yes. Kate! Hello! There we are. Ten past one on the dot. Well, you're too early. For once. <sighs> Any messages? Peter rang. He wants to see you. He said he'll be at the bottling plant this afternoon. Is that all he said? I don't think it's all he wanted to say. He was being careful over the phone. Ah, that's why he didn't phone the shop. He's a funny fellow. Hates to think of anybody doing anything for this town if it's not himself. Could you not share the credit with him? Make out that he gave you the idea. Something I like don't that. care who gets the credit. The important thing is to get it sorted. My father phoned. Oh, I'm he not wants surprised. To see you too. Mrs. McIntosh, I've got her pills. She must have forgotten it was early closing. Look, I'll call in an archer on the way back. Well, don't be too long. I've got the women's rural at three. He's looking very well. Oh, he's fine now. I brought your pills. Oh, dear, I'm tired of glacier to old woman to forget those. Ah, it's no trouble, Mrs. McIntosh. Oh, but tucking up your precious time. But time is my own. It's my afternoon off. Oh, you're kind. You're very kind. <laughs>
Damn! Morning, Archie. What's the trouble? I've got black spot. Oh, dear, how does that affect you? Can you describe the symptoms? God's sake, man, it's not on me. It's on my roses. Look! I don't know much about gardening. I'll leave that to Catherine. Well, it's a fungus. You've got to catch it quicker. It spreads and can destroy the whole plant. Here, by the way, what's this damn fool story of Peggy? Something about poison. <laughs> she told you? Yes, came in this morning, especially on her way past, to tell me. What's she up to, eh? She's not trying to take the mickey out of me, No, no, she? she wouldn't do that. I should hope not. <laughs> do you mean to tell me it's true? Perfectly. <laughs> oh, well, I don't blame you. Must be quite a temptation. What uh, is? To make a fool of that damned ass of a brother of yours. But it's perfectly true. What? The water's contaminated, all right. You mean with chrome sulfate from my tannery? Probably. <laughs> you never get Peter to believe that story. He's got to believe it. Everybody will have to believe it. Everybody. Oh, oh, oh. Good luck to you. Uh, well, serve them right. They threw me out of their council because I used to give them a bit of my mind now and again, and they didn't like it one bit. There's nothing in these fellows' heads but feathering their own nests and running other people's lives for them. You pull their legs good and hard. <laughs> It'll do them no harm. Look, it's perfectly true. The water's contaminated. Oh, sure, it's true, yeah. <laughs> perfectly true, I'm sure. Tell you what, I'll give you a box of Havana cigars if you can get away with it. Right, you're on. Good. Here, I think I'll go and see Houston before I see Peter. Houston? Is he in on this? Aye, <laughs> you could put it like that. Oh, well done, Thomas. You're going the right way about it. You get it into the newspapers and you'll pull it off all right. Piece. Well, I've kept half a half column for the front page. That should be enough. It's only the first blast of a trumpet. Aye, ah, when we get started. Uh, Mr. Yeah? Mr. Stockman here. Which one? The human one. I'll see you in my office. Ah. That's fine, John. You're doing a good job. Oh, Mary. Bring three coffees. On a tray. I've been thinking about this whole thing. Good. From your point of view, it's an isolated incident, but I wonder if you realize just how much it involves. A considerable expense, but that can't be avoided. So that's what I wanted to talk over you. You think the source of pollution is the tannery? Yes. Well, there's another source. And it's contaminating more than the spa. It's contaminating the whole life of this town. You know what I'm talking about? No idea. Well, mainly I'm talking about the council. Uh, not all of the councillors, some of them are reasonable, decent people doing what they think is a decent job, but a few of them have the whole power of this place in their hands. They and the people behind them. What people? Oh, come on now. The people who don't want change, unless there's something in it for them. The people on the council are there because they've got ability. Did they show any ability or experience when they agreed to the bottling plant? Against your advice? Oh, but that was a mistake. That'll be put right. Do you think it'll be as easy as it's that? It's got to be done. It will be done. If I take the thing up, launch a campaign. Oh, no, that, that sort of thing's not necessary. I'm sure that the people on the council have the interest of the town at heart. Well, I'm not. When I bought the advertiser, I wanted to break these people up. Let them some fresh air. I, I wanted this town to be a friendly, cheerful sort of place for the fellow selling his daily bread. Oh, I know, you told me. They nearly broke you instead. Yeah. Yes, very nearly. I was on the edge of going bust. Then I got help from, well, someone I didn't expect. I've been keeping quiet for a while, Tom, but now I'm just about ready again. It's the corruption behind the red tape and the official bloody-mindedness I want to get at. 
I want this town run for the sake of the townspeople instead of a few wealthy parasites. Well, that sounds very commendable. And you have given me a peg to hang it on. A what? I had to work my way up, Tom. I know what it's like to be at the bottom of the heap. Hello? Hey, do you know what the people around this town think no, of me? I'm sorry, he's in the meeting. They think I'm dangerous. They think I'm an agitator. Do they? Yeah. Well, look, take and the they're quite right. Room, but we'll phone them back now. We'll Come later. in. Yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, I thought I'd save the lassie the stairs. Thank you, Mr. Geeky. Machine coffee, I'm afraid, Tom. Ah, oh, thank you. Mr. Dinner. Sure. Thank you. Uh, is it true what I hear, sir, that you've been demanding improvements in the water supply to the spa? Oh, well, I suppose you could put it like that. Ah, uh, well, any scheme to improve the amenities in this town will have my support. That's very kind of you. You know, it wouldn't really harm to have the working people of Bakey behind you, the proletariat. We form, as it were, the silent majority, and it's always a good thing to have the majority on your side. Oh, I'm sure it is, but it'll not be necessary in this case. No, no, the whole thing is perfectly simple and straightforward. Uh, pardon me, sir, I know our local authorities very well, and they're often quite reluctant to act on proposals that come from other people. Now, if we could get up a wee demonstration. A demonstration? Aye, about the new water supply. With moderation, of course, great moderation. That has always been my watchword. That's a well-known characteristic of yours, Mr. Geeky. Uh, both in my trade union capacity and as chairman of the rate pairs. I'll see you have the full support, both of my members and the rate pairs. Geeky, about this demonstration. I uh, will have a word about that later, Mr. Carmichael. Now, we must show great moderation. I mean, no point in offending the authorities. That never did any good to anybody. But they can't take exception to a moderate, unreasonable demonstration of public opinion. Uh, but I'm sure it will not be necessary. Well, the authorities are always slow to act, Mr. Stockman. Uh, we'll stir them up in the advertiser, Mr. Geeky. Ah. Uh, well, remember, do you no harm to have the ordinary folk of this town behind no, you? No, of course not. Uh -huh. Now, I'll run away and get on with it. Well, that's uh, very reassuring. Ah, he's a well-meaning sort of chap, but with too many well-meaning, decent folk that wouldn't put out their tongues at a tame rabbit, you can hardly blame the council for kicking them around. And what this town really needs is some people with drive and guts. Tom, did you do that piece for us? No, I brought you this instead. It's a copy of my, uh, my official reports that published. That's even better. I would treat it as confidential for the minute. Now, if I have any difficulty in getting what I consider to be adequate action, then you can make what you say like of it. You don't think we should start the ball no. rolling? No. I think we give the council a chance to put matters right. I'm inclined to agree. Let's save our ammunition until we need it. All right. But the moment you find you're up against a brick wall, and I'll be very surprised if you don't, you'll let me know. Certainly. But I don't think we'll have any trouble. No. Notice you express yourself with your customary violence. You remark that we're peddling an expensive but effective method of self-destruction. Oh, well, that's what it'll come to, unless we do something about it. And you conclude that the toxic material is coming from the tannery? Yes. I called in on Charlie Duncan this morning. Are oh, you playing bridge in the mornings now? In his capacity as chairman of the Environmental Health Committee. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. I'll put your theory to him as a hypothetical possibility. Something that might have to be dealt with sometime in the future. In the future? We had a good laugh. Did you? The effluent from the tannery goes into a settling pond. It is then carefully filtered before it passes into the public sewerage system, by which time it is completely harmless. No, it's nothing to do with the public sewerage system. It's probably seeping from the settling pond down into the water table. Well, we considered that possibility. It's imaginative, to say the least. Oh, it's in line with the facts. In your opinion. Have you considered what might be involved? Well, that's not my business. The tannery would have to close. To rebuild the settling pond would require a very large sum of money. And with the spa closed as well, that would be the town's two principal sources of prosperity gone. No choice. And in the end, your theory may well prove to have no foundation. Oh, well, it's unlikely. I am not convinced the water is as bad as you make out. Well, the figures are in my report. Now, they come from a reputable analyst. And if we go on drawing water at the present rate, they're bound to get worse. I still think you're exaggerating somewhat all the same. 
Would it not be possible, Thomas, for a, a capable chemist to prevent any injurious influences from becoming too obvious? This plant is an established fact. We must face it. And the council might be prepared to consider certain improvements consistent with a reasonable expenditure. I'm not going to have anything to do with trickery of that sort. Trickery? A fraud. Criminal fraud. All I am asking you to do is wait. Later, I'll raise the question in council and we'll do what we can in private. But in the meantime, in the meantime, not a word of this must get to the public ear. It's too late. What? Too many people know about it already. Who knows? The advertiser. They know. Ah, oh, you guy independent, Thomas. Ah. There's a lot of people earning a shilling here. To you. Or to me? Aye, to you and yours. Explain that. I've always tried to behave to you in a brotherly sort of way, Thomas. I've always tried to help you whenever I could. Well, I'm trying but to help you. But the moment you get an idea into your head, you must write to the newspapers about well, it. Look, it's part of my duty as technical advisor to this part to keep the public informed. The public has got enough on its plate. You see here, Thomas, I'll be blunt with you. You are doing yourself no good. You're I complaining about this, that, or the other thing. He complain about the local authority. Not just you, your daughter, too. You complain about the health service. Now you're complaining about the spa. You have no consideration for anyone else's opinions. You seem to have forgotten that you've got me to thank for your appointment at the spa. Oh, it's the best man you could get for the job. True enough. And I did a lot of work in developing it. But it was the practical men who initiated the big project. When the right time came, I and the council took the matter in hand. Oh, my God, you did look at the bloody mess you made of it. Well, you only did it to bolster your own egos. Now we're getting down to the truth of it. All you're wanting is to pick a quarrel with your superiors. You have no time for anyone set in authority above you. Any stick is good enough to beat them with. I'll tell you this, though. You are not going to get the better of me. You have been indiscreet, Thomas. All sorts of rumours will get about, and rumours against established authority are dangerous. As soon as that water you're bottling there, it will be necessary for you to issue a public disclaimer saying that after further investigation you found that the condition of the water is not as critical as you first thought. Do you really expect me to do that? Yes. Oh, well, sorry, I can't. And you'll never mend it by tinkering, that's my opinion. As a private individual, you can think what you like. As our employee, you have no right to express any personal views. You have a moral duty to... Not on any subject concerning the spa. I forbid it. You forbid it? You oblige me to take that too. And you really expect me to issue a statement saying that I don't know my job? Aye. Eh? Some statement on the lines I indicated. Well, you know perfectly well that I won't do that. I can't. Well, that's unfortunate, Thomas because I have some influence with the Regional Medical Board. I could have your license taken off you. With a car or dog. You know what I mean. They'll stop you dispensing. On what grounds? You don't keep to the stipulated hours for a start. No, I go over them. That's perfectly legal. And what about your amateur doctoring? Oh, I know what goes on. A few pills here, a bottle of medicine there. Doctor. Frown on it. One little slip-up, one wrong diagnosis, and you'd be finished. It's never happened. You saying it couldn't? My God, you sunk pretty low. I will use any means I can to make you see reason. It's not just you; it's your family. I'm thinking you of. You my family out of this. It's the town I'm thinking of. You'll do it no good by cutting off its principal sources of income. Oh, my God, say, what kind of an income is it that thrives on the sale of corruption? You should be ashamed to make offensive remarks like that about the town that gives you a livelihood. Perhaps I should say gave you a livelihood. And with no help from me, you'll soon find yourself without customers. When the people hear you've ruined the town's prosperity. He said that. Arrogant pig. And well, what are you going to do? He's not going to get away with it. Good. He 
He's got power behind him. I've got power behind me. I've got the people behind me. I've got the press behind me. But you can't fight your own brother. Do you not want me to stand up for what I believe to be right? Of course, he's got to. It'll do you no good. Well, I've done my duty. I'm not thinking of myself. You're not thinking about your family either. What about us? Oh, Mum. Well, don't worry about me, Dad. I'm sorry, Catherine. I'm not going to give in to blackmail. It's red hot. Yeah, he does have a persuasive literary style. Quote, there can be no conflict of interests. My public duty must outweigh any filial or commercial loyalty, unquote. Mr. Houston, telephone. I've made one or two cuts. It'll save us half a dozen libel actions. Houston. Oh, hello, Mr. Stockman. Do I take it you've run into that brick wall? Now he's got to let us use it. Well, that's good news. Good God. That's going a bit far in for him. Mm hmm. What? Yep. What, what, what are we seeing here then? Right, goodbye just now. Okay, the fight is on. Good. It'll start something. But we've got to follow it up. They won't fall down at the first blast of the trumpet. Yeah, but if the promise from the council sit back and do nothing to put this thing right, the ratepayers will want to know why. The council sank a lot of their money in that bottling plant. Aye, but it's the shareholders who get the profit. And it won't take the ratepayers long to detect the faint, sweet smell of corruption. You know, I got the impression our promise is in a very satisfactory mess. I have to give it the papers. That Houston man's just using you. I'm using him. He's a rabble rouser. That's just what this town needs. Well, I don't trust him. He's on Dad's side. You heard what he said yesterday. He wants public recognition for Dad. You're easily taken in. And so are you, Tom. It's happened time and again. You've a better brain than anybody else in this town, but anybody can make a fool of you. That's the kind of thing that Peter would say. You're beginning to talk like him. Thanks very much. Are you going to make the tea? It's not too late to stop them printing the report. I wish you'd go and see who's to... Dad! All right. I'll go and see Houston, and you can make the tea. But you can't. You be quiet. It's only Maybe. shortbread. Do you mean it? I didn't get my dinner, remember? Do you really mean it? But you see Houston. Cross my heart. What's the matter with you? Well, I never thought I'd see the day. You convinced me I should go and see who's. I did. Public recognition, all that sort of nonsense. That's what we stopped to that. So you're going to let him print the Absolutely. report? Absolutely. And give him ammunition for the battle. Oh, fantastic! It's strong meat, Geeky. I hope it doesn't alarm you. Oh, I have no objection to strong meat, Mr. Carmichael. That's the stuff. Hit hard and often. Eh? Aye, but with moderation. moderation aye. Now, all the incompetents are going to be kicked out, and we've got to put in honest, vigorous men instead. And this article is just the weapon we've been looking for. Yeah. Tom Stockman's going to be useful, all right. Oh, it'll be fine if he just sticks to the spa, but I don't think it would be very wise to follow him further. Geeky, I detect a distinct tinge of yellow in you. I'll thank you not to make personal remarks about my appearance. Uh, sorry, Mr. Kiki. It just means that uh, perhaps you're inclined to be a little overcautious. Oh, I. I'm a bit timid when it comes to offending the authorities. I'm an older man than you are, Mr. Carmichael, and I've found it doesn't always pay. Nothing more you want me for at the moment? Uh, not at the moment. Right. I know he's the father of the chapel and all that, but can't we keep him out of the editorial space? It's not that simple. But I'm bloody fed up with all this car canny business. You always seem to let him get away with it. So Geeky has a lot of influence. He's got a finger in every pie. Unions, ratepayers, a lot. In a small town like this, that makes him a part of the reckoning. I realise well, that. There's something but... you don't know. That time we nearly went bust because we couldn't pay bonuses. It was Geeky who persuaded the workforce here to carry on. Even now, if he took it into a set to insist on higher rates or withdraw his labour, We'd have to put up the shutters. Oh, but surely and actually, God, I'm to... perpetually balancing on a knife edge. A few issues not published could finish me. And the workforce. Surely they'd only be cutting their noses off to spite their faces. One of the big newspaper groups is waiting for just that to happen. To take over this part of Scotland. And they soon snap this one up. And the workers will be kept on with higher wages. Oh, I, I didn't know that. No, no. So, I'm afraid we'll have to carry on with this. 
excuse me, Mr. Houston, Mr. Stockman's here, the other one. The promise? What the hell does he want? Well, he wants a word with you. Don't think he wants to be seen. He came in through the case room. All right, sir. Oh, Mr. Geeky, uh, see we're not interrupted, will you? Uh, it's the Provost, Mr. Houston. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Houston. You'd be surprised to see me here. Yes, sir, we didn't expect to. Uh, have I got a chair for the Provost? You're very snug in here, Mr. Carmichael. Very snug indeed. It serves its purpose, Provost. It serves its purpose. Long may it continue to do so. Thank you. A free and flourishing press is an essential part of the community. And here I come, Mr. Houston, without notice to take up your time. Well, we're delighted to see you. I've had a very annoying experience today. I'm oh, sorry to hear that, Provost. Was your civic lunch not up to standard, Provost? My brother was responsible for today's incident. Really? Hmm. He submitted a kind of report about certain alleged defects in the water supply to the spa. Indeed. Did he not tell you about it? I thought he yes, said... Yes, yes, he did say so. Uh, John, do you remember something about a report? Uh, sorry to trouble you, uh, Mr. Houston, but I forgot to take the copy with me. I can read it during the tea break. Mr. Geeky, is that by any chance my brother's report? Aye, it is. Mr. Houston and I were just chatting about it. I take it you've read it, Mr. Houston. I've glanced through it, yeah. And you're going to publish it? And why not? Well, I'll... Uh, just a minute, Mr. Geeky. Uh, you don't mind, Mr. Houston? No, no, not at all. You have the reputation of being a... an intelligent and thoughtful man, Mr. Geeky. Oh, it's very kind of you to say that, Provost. And a man of considerable influence, eh? I'm just a voice of the citizenry, sir. I've no doubt you're aware of the general trend of opinion among them. Oh, I believe I am. Aye. It's evidence of an excellent public spirit. Mind you, it'll be no small sacrifice the people of this town are going to make. Sacrifice? I don't think we understand you, Provost. Are you talking about the spa? I would make a rough estimate of 150,000 pounds to put the water supply right. 150,000? I'm more or less. It'll make a big difference to the rates. The rates? Good God, you don't say the town's going to pay for it. But where else would you expect it to come from? Not from the tannery. There's no hard evidence that they're the source. But the bottling plant is a private company. Surely the shareholders would have to find the money? Yes, exactly. Good point, Kiki. No. They're in no position to find it. And they've already incurred a substantial capital outlay. Let's remember, they are good bakey men. But if they're pushed too far, they may be forced to sell out. To London, perhaps. Well, that puts a different kind of complexion on things, doesn't it? Nevertheless, Kiki, that report has to be published. It'll mean closing the spa and the tannery. And we'll not get many visitors if we announce that the water supply is contaminated. And frankly, Mr. Houston, it'll hardly improve your circulation if you're seen to be advocating unemployment and an increase in the rates. Is it uh, possible, do you think, Provost, that Mr. Stockman has been exaggerating this thing a wee bit? I must confess, I find myself driven to that conclusion. Oh, indeed. In fact, you might even say that he's been... Uh, Imagining the whole thing, so to speak. The possibility had occurred to me. Well, I must say, I think that very remiss of Mr. Stockman. You'll excuse me speaking about your brother in this way. I'm a great believer in moderation, as you well know, but in the circumstances... I take no offence, Mr. Geeky. My brother has I been headstrong. I've tried to curb his excesses, but... it hasn't always been easy. Ah, difficult position for you, Provost. I can see that. You won't want to take this matter any further, Mr. Houston. Well, of course we bloody will. Now, look, listen to me, Geeky. Tom Stockman may be right or he may be wrong. Sure. The only way to find out is to publish that damn report and have the whole thing thrashed out in public. All due respect to you, Provost, but we cannot suppress that report just because you disagree with your brother. It's not quite as simple as that. You see, once this thing gets out, the town is ruined. And if that thing doesn't get out, and it's proved to be right, then this town will be really ruined. 
In the meantime, we must leave ourselves in the hands of the provost. I mean, he wouldn't say that his brother was imagining the whole thing if he didn't think it was true. Don't you agree, Mr. Houston? Well, good God, man, of course you don't. Afraid I would have to put it to my members that it might not be in the interest of the ordinary people of this town to publish such a dangerous report. And uh, while I was making that proposition, all labor would have to be withdrawn. <laughs> I'll be in the case room if you need me. John, John. Oh, well, uh, I'll be off to my work, Provost. It was very good of you to straighten us out in this matter. A painful duty. We'll get together later and sort this out. I bloody hope so. Look, it's a very sensitive area, this, John. You don't understand all the... Oh, I stuff. understand all right. And it gives me a pain in my sensitive area. Now, look, I've had small-town politics up to here. Now, if you want to placate those two bastards, then you may do so. But without my help. Look, I'll sort this out. Just leave it with me. I've drawn up a short statement, Mr. Houston. It indicates that the board is always on the lookout for possible defects and will not hesitate to put anything right without incurring too much expense. Have you got it with you? As it happens. Ah, Carmichael. Now, there's... Mr. Houston, the other one. Well, well, Peter. I'm surprised that you come in here behind my back. Now, I'm sorry to trouble you, Mr. Houston, but I thought we should include some statistics. Well, there's no trouble. Well, you know I had a number of customers with chrome poisoning. There'd be no names, of course, no means of identification. Well, yes, it's an idea, certainly, but uh, uh, can we talk about it later? We're very busy uh, just well, at the moment. As you wish, but uh, um, there's one other thing uh, uh, that I thought I would mention to you. Uh, yeah, well, you know what the folk here are like. I mean, they're a, they're a good bunch in the main, and... Uh, well, so far as I know, they think quite highly of me. Oh, well, they do indeed, sir. They do indeed. So far. Uh, exactly. So I thought that when this became public, they might feel that they'd have to make some sort of a gesture. Look, Tom. I can't hide it from you any longer. No, I won't hear of it. Uh, I mean, if anything of that sort is being planned, well, you must give me your sort? Well, I don't know of it. I mean, uh, anything. I mean, whatever it is, uh, you must give me your word you'll put a stop to it. I don't think I'm ungrateful. I appreciate it very much, but I have done nothing except my duty. You see this, Houston? The symbol of office. For God's sake, Thomas. Uh, the symbol, not the man. If I was to open this, I wouldn't find a small lie or a tiny hypocrisy or even the slightest whiff of corruption. But if I was to open its owner... Will you please put down my umbrella? You've been wasting your time, Peter, if you've come here to try and stop Houston publishing my report. And does Mr. Houston intend to publish your report? No, I don't. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Yeah, I don't quite understand. Well, he's not going to ruin himself and his paper and the people of this town for the sake of an imaginary grievance. What's all this about, Houston? I'm afraid you gave us a rather highly coloured account of this business. Oh, what do you mean by that? I mean your report exaggerates the whole thing. Look, I'm not asking you to understand it. Just publish it. Leave the explaining to me afterwards. Sorry, I can't. What do you mean you can't? You own this paper. Carmichael edits it. I mean, between the two of you, control it. Ah, well, that's not quite true, sir. It's controlled by the public. Public opinion, of course. The opinion of the men and the women of this town. And they would be against me? Oh, aye, they would. Oh, well, they've changed the tune very quickly. Well, it would mean disaster for them if your report got out. Aye, economic, maybe, but physical disaster to thousands of others if it doesn't. Is this final, Houston? I'm afraid so. The official statement will appear in Saturday's issue, Mr. Houston. Yes. Well, I'll get my report published privately and distributed. You won't find it easy to get it printed in this town. I'll hold a public meeting. I'll tell everyone about it. Are you a gardener, Houston? No. Ah, but you've maybe heard of black spot. It's a fungus that attracts the leaves 
and eventually spreads and destroys the whole plant. Well, it seems to me that there's more than roses are prone to it. Great things are done when men and mountains meet. And this is not done by jostling in the street. A small mountain. Oh, Blake might have considered it big enough. Imagine your father not getting anybody else to speak but out here. What's everybody afraid of? I'm not surprised after all it's a controversial subject. In circumstances like this, people are inclined to be a wee bit nervous. Well, so am I. I'm glad to have someone around in case they start throwing things. Let's stand over here by the archway, then we can make a quick exit if things get too brisk. You don't think there's going to be any trouble, do you? Well, you can never tell with a crowd like this. Uh, I see they're all here, huh? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Ah, well, look, it's, uh, it's 5.15. I think we should just begin. Yeah. I mean, there's no point in Would it not away. be better to elect a chairman? What? Yes. 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 I think it would maybe be as well for us to have a chairman. Well, all right, all right. It's have a chairman. Well, have a chairman if you want. 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 But I'm sure we would all find Mr. Geeky acceptable. Yeah. Uh, brothers and sisters, this is a democratically convened meeting on a matter of public concern. And I hope that we can give a full and frank discussion to the issues involved. Within the bounds of moderation, of course. I will have no interruptions from you, if you please. Now, the chair recognizes the provost. Provost the has the floor. Fellow citizens of Bigi, my friends, I hope, you all know that I stand in close relationship to the technical advisor of the spa. He is my brother. I would therefore have preferred not to take part in this discussion. But my official position and my concern for the interests of the town compel me to. I think my statement in the advertiser puts the position plainly and simply so that any fair-minded son or daughter of Bigi can form his or her own opinion. But I am bound to add that the expert view is that my brother's proposals would saddle the ratepayers with the unnecessary expenditure of a very large sum of money. I feel it is my duty to save you from that burden. I vacate the chair to say that I personally support the promise. There is more behind his brother's ideas than you might think. Where the hell are you? Oh, I'm not saying he doesn't mean well. No two ways about that. And I am all for the free expression of opinion, as long as it is a moderate opinion and doesn't do anybody any harm. But nobody is going to tell me that his opinion is a moderate one if it means a rise in the rates and in the unemployment. You can pay too dearly for some things. Chair recognizes Mr. Houston. Come on, Houston, let's hear your views. Mr. Houston has the floor. Your current views, that is. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope this meeting is in no doubt about the honesty and independence of the advertiser. We, we try to make our political attitude objective. We try to be fair to all parties. And we always try to reflect public opinion. That is the first duty of a newspaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have very little doubt where public opinion lies in this matter, against any substantial increase in the rates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say all this with regret. I personally have always had the greatest respect for Mr. Thomas Stockman. Nevertheless, my duty to my paper and to you, the public, 
has compelled me to break with her. Thank you. I will now put the Provost's motion to the vote. No, no, Geeky, that's enough of that nonsense. I will ask you to show a little respect for oh, the chair. Shut up, Geeky, give the man a chance. Thank yeah, you, yeah. Friend, the voice of reason and the vote of this. Mr. Stockman has the floor. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. There will be no vote here tonight. We slick it, Kurin Tebris. Come on, God, we are panic. The water supply is poisoned, and our curative spa is gone. That is what they won't admit. But I'm no bothered with such a trivial matter, because. Once you think that your have had a certain amount of profit out of it, uh, that matter will be attended to with your money by some nameless, faceless, overpaid bureaucrat from somewhere or other. But that too is a trivial matter compared with what I have discovered. I have discovered that the very sources of our spiritual life is poisoned. That the whole fabric of our society is infected with lies and deceit. And if we don't do something about it, you'll all be dead as a dodo. Well, I'm rubbish. I'll just take the point. Oh, I'm rather geeky. I'll stick to the point, as you call it. And my point is that suddenly in these last few days, my eyes have been opened, and the first thing I have become aware of is the overwhelming stupidity of the authorities. And I do not know how, for so long, I should have believed that these were dedicated men with our best interests in front of them. But I did believe that. I did believe that they were men who wanted a society in which a man could live as a man, rather than an animal. Hey, Jimmy, is he called that as animals? Who does he think we he are the animals? animals. We but are they do not know that. They're not dedicated to anything except their own self-interest. And I do not know why I should have taken so long to find this out. Because day in, day out, I had living right under my nose a prime example of their kind. Your own provost, the one you elected, my brother Peter. Uh, out of our Mr. Oh, out of our I'm no bother about your leading citizens. They're all wheel planted with the seeds of their own destruction. And they are not the ones who are poisoning the very sources of our spiritual life. The most dangerous persons in our community to truth and freedom are the ones who put them there. That is precisely why I am here. The most dangerous enemies of truth and freedom in our community are you. The majority, the damned silent majority. You are responsible. The majority is always right, Stockman. That is the fundamental principle of democracy. All right, here, Mr. Houston, it's fundamental all right. It's fundamental trickery. And it is also the most obvious lie that any individual free-thinking man has got to fight against. Well, who are the majority? All over the world, there is a majority of fools over wise men. How then can it be right for fools to govern wise men? Tom, Tom, right. yesterday you were fighting for a good cause. Now you're, you're talking like a bloody fascist man. Now, yesterday, Carmichael, you walked out on a good cause. Not at all. I walked out on censorship of the press. Censorship. <laughs> censorship by Mr. Houston. Right. And yet he's supposed to be a revolutionary agitator. So prove, you're well... prove that. Why, why did I ever say that in my paper? What about your office? Everything and everybody talks. It seems to me it's you who's the revolutionary. Yes, oh, I'm exactly. Sorry for once you're right. I'm starting a revolution against the lie that truth and the majority go hand in hand. What kind of truths do the majority generally rally around? Meaningless tax phrases, because that's what their leaders want. Their leaders do not want to declare a victory, they want the battle to continue, because they believe that the continuation of a state of war is to their advantage. And far less do those leaders have the vision to see the new horizons of thought 
That is something that is only given to a brilliant few. Keir Hardy was such a man. Hey, you see Keir Hardy? Where do you know that Keir Hardy? Keir Hardy won the battle. Now, a hundred years later, Brother Geeky and his like are picking over corpses. The new horizons are far, far ahead of their miserable vision. Listen to me, my friends. You are not so stupid as to think that it was the majorities who achieved advances in the field of science. You can't be that stupid. And all I'm saying to you is that in the political arena, in the management of our society, it will be one man, one Keir Hardy, one brilliant individual leader of thought who will reveal to you the new horizons. The majority tramples the individual underfoot while he is searching for the truths of today. The majority all over the world have to trample all the individuals under a million brutal feet. I'm not on any side anymore, Jimmy. No, no, no. Don't you see I have to be free? Your leaders want your sides. One side against the other. Divide and conquer, one of them said. And by God, they conquer. Some of them are stupid enough to do it in his name. They conquer the individual. Trade unions, managements, political parties, whatever you like, they have to conquer the individual because they want to get your brains and grind them into a single mass. So you know you're capable of thinking for yourselves. They pander to you on the telly and in the press so that you shall be their majority. Theirs, not you. They do not want you to wake up and chuck the whole lot of them out. They don't believe you. Of course they don't believe you because they are the majority and the majority stifles the conscience of the individual. The point is, Mr. Stockman, that you want to close the spa and ruin this yeah. town. Oh, that yes, itself is unimportant. That, that is what, not unimportant to them because they are not going to ruin themselves. Can't you see that's exactly what they are doing? That is the whole point. I mean, a majority becomes the enemy of the individuals who compose that majority. You are the enemy, the enemy of the people, yeah. because you want to ruin the town. Well, I would rather see this town ruined than have it flourish on a lie. What does it matter? The lying community is ruined. I mean, I, let it be raised to the ground. Let all communities live by lying and be exterminated like burglars. Come over the chemist, Mr. Carmichael. Suffering the fate of all men who swim against the tide, will he? Aye. Hey, would have a drum or two inside him, is that it? Courage to be full blooded hooligans and chuck half bricks. What did the joiners say? Well, I'll phone both of them. Bain said he was too busy. McDowell was more honest. He said it was more than his business was worth to do a job for you just now. I suppose he's right. We'll need to do a proper job on this, so. Can I have the shovel? Just a minute. Major hands. Well, Mr. Downey phoned. He wants to terminate the lease at the end of the quarter. You can't do that. Oh, I didn't argue. Oh, Tom. No, I have been uh, thinking about Canada. The air is fresher. 
And uh, a kibbis, can I get work? We can't just up and away like that. Why not? We're not as young as we were at the start. And what about Peggy? She'd not want to go. Oh, she says it's a great place for teachers. She's I complaining about the education system here. Well, I think you should have other reasons for wanting to stay. Ah, well, you can't expect me to stay. This town would have insulted me. Called me an enemy of the people. Broke my windows. Torn my best trousers. Did I show you my trousers? Yes, dear, you showed me. Ah, oh, well, it's a lesson to me. I'll never again go out to fight for freedom and the rights of the individual in my best trousers. No, dear. I'll sew them up again. They'll be as good as new. What surprises me is their ingratitude. I know, and it's a shame. But you did give them provocation. I told them the truth about themselves, and they didn't like it. No, they did not. Oh, well, come on, I've got to get moving. I'm still open for business. Guess what? I've been suspended. Why? Because I use school property to run off Dad's handbill. Oh. I've just been to see Granddaddy. Asked me to give you these. Cigars? Here's Peter. I'll away and get your toolbox. Are you going back to the house, Peggy? Yes, I'll run you, Mum. Your bonnet on and your brolly up. It's going to draft you in here today. I see you have a lot to do. I won't keep you. Good. I'm sorry I wasn't able to put a stop to that demonstration. Is that all you came in here to say? I have to give you this. That's the termination of my services as technical advisor to the spa. Yes. Now, you'll excuse me. I've got rather a lot to do. Expecting customers then? Maybe. After the sore heads last night. If you'll take my advice, Thomas, you'll leave the district for a while. Funny enough, I was just thinking of that. Good. In my own time, of course. That's the first sensible decision you've made for a long time. And maybe after six months or so, when you've had time to think things over, you might be able to persuade yourself to write a word or two of apology. Perhaps admitting that you made a mistake. Do you think maybe. I would get my job at the spa back if I did that. No, it's just possible. I can promise nothing, but I'll do what I can for you. And what about public opinion? Public opinion is a fickle thing, Thomas. Ah, you wouldn't go against that, surely? There is no saying what the public will think in six months' time. And to be candid with you, it is of considerable importance that we should get some kind of written statement from you to that effect. <laughs> Aye, that's what you really came in for, isn't it? But you've no chance, Peter. You'll never get a statement like that out of me. You've no right to behave like this, Thomas. It's no attitude for a man with a family to take. I wouldn't have a shred of self-respect if I did anything else. Ah, very plausible. If there were no other explanation for your obstinacy, but there is, of course. Is there? But if you'll take my advice, you'll not build too much on your expectations. They could very easily fail you. My expectations? You have a father-in-law. What about it? Sir Archie is well up in years. He's been failing of late. And he is a comparatively rich man. Oh, I suppose he is. You can take my word for it. And you can take my word for it that you and Catherine are his principal legatees. Yeah, I didn't even know that. How did you? We don't need to go. Another that. member of the bridge club, I suppose. But after what happened at that meeting, it wouldn't surprise me if Sir Archie changed his mind. Oh, no, there's no fear of that, Peter. He was enjoying the whole idea of the thing. And he's got no love for your crowd. I see. This explains everything. Does it? Conspiracy. Conspiracy? There was no word of truth in any of it. It was merely the price you had to pay for Sir Archie's goodwill. Do you really believe that? And you had the affrontery to talk about corruption. Your dismissal is final, Thomas. I have a weapon against you now. Morning, 
Archie. Got them on the run this time. This solution of copper carbonate, first class, it kills the fungus. Thanks for the cigars. Huh? Oh, not at all. You did me a good turn. Did I? Oh, yourself, really, I suppose. You see, I went down and inquired in the morning, and I discovered that the shares in the bottling plant were going for chicken feed, so I bought them. What? Oh, yeah, a controlling interest, really. You see, I've been putting aside a bit of money for you and Catherine lately. You know, in the event of my unhappy decease and so on, and it just struck me, why the hell should you wait for it? You better have it now, so I bought you the bottling plant. You bought the, the bottling plant? I bought the, the, the bottling plant. Oh, but it's useless. It cannot be used. Not in its present state. It's a dead loss. Absolute nonsense. It's up to you. It's your money, yours and Catherine's. You mean you put all my, all Catherine's money into that useless load of rubble? Yes! You must be mad. Not at all. I don't believe that story about chrome sulfate getting out of my settling pond. But it's true. It's a matter of opinion. All you've got to do is to say that you made a mistake. Nobody's going to argue with you. And by and by, you'll find that the shares in the bottling plant are going up, and you'll have made a small fortune. A canny lie like that. I think it's about time you came to terms with the facts of life. You're not getting any younger, you I know? wish to God I wasn't so certain. I admit I've got a responsibility to my family. Of course you have. Maybe I'll talk it over with Catherine. Oh, a good idea. Get a sensible woman's advice. But look, don't wait too long, because if you're not going to use those shares, I've got to do something with them. I don't know what, give them to a, to a charity, I suppose. And what'll Catherine get? Catherine will get sweet damn all. But why didn't you have a word with us beforehand? Just a hint to Mr. Hoosen or myself would have made all the difference. A hint about what? About what was behind it all, sir. Behind all what? Say what you mean, Mr. Geeky. Ah, oh, come on, I said. No need to make such a mystery out. We're all men of the world here. I mean, you're not going to tell me that your father-in-law hasn't bought up most of the shares of the bottling plant? No, 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 I suppose he has. What has all, what has all that got to do with it? Well, uh, wouldn't it have been better to have got somebody else to do it? I mean, somebody who was maybe not so near related to you? I myself think that it would have been better to have kept your name out of it altogether. I mean, there was no need for anybody to know that the attack on the spa came from you. Pity you didn't have a word with us about it. But, by the way, where's Carmichael? Ah, he's away. Maybe just as well. Didn't understand us being a stranger, so to speak. Uh, on the contrary, I think he understood you all too well. Uh, and Mr. Houston? He's not well. But as I was saying, you should have spread the responsibility. You kept it too much to yourself. All right. Now, what's your game? Well, the fact is, now we know the way the wind blows. We thought that we might be able to put the advertiser at your disposal after all. We? Who the hell are you to speak for Houston? How would I do? Good. Now, what about public opinion? Aren't you afraid of that? We'll change it. I mean, your reason for wanting to get hold of the bottling plant was in the public interest, of course. Oh, naturally. I mean, that's why Sir Archie came in with me. We'll tinker with the settling pond, make it look all right. And it'll not cost a penny of public money. Ah, that might work all right if you've got the advertiser behind you. The press is a power in free country, sir. And the ratepayers, uh, what about them? Oh, I think I can answer for the ratepayers too. And uh, what exactly? Is in it for Houston? Well, financial support for the advertiser would be guy welcome. It's a bit too shaky just now, and uh, I would, well, we would be unwilling to suspend it while it still had so much useful work to do. <laughs> and uh, what if I was to refuse to give you a single penny? I mean, we rich men don't like parting with money. 
And well, as that, I would just have to remind you that this business of the shares can be presented in two ways. Ah, and you're just a man, Dave. How well, Mr. Geeky? You can rest assured I'll give careful thought to all that you have said. No hurry, sir. Just take your time. Thank you, Geeky. You know, one of these days, somebody is going to spray you with a solution of copper carbonate, and it'll be a great improvement. That is my answer, and that is final. Dad, are you serious about Canada? Perfectly. Oh, fantastic. When are we going? No. We are not going to run away. We're not going to Canada. But you're not going back to that school of yours. <laughs> what am I going to do? We're going to make a start with those backward kids you're eye on about. We are going to teach them, them at least, that truth is truth. That was your grandfather on the phone. Now, even he... I gave him the answer, no. That means that your mother has lost her expectations. Do you think that's going to bother her? Oh, I think it will. Rubbish. Maybe she'll have to pinch and scrape a wee bit on her side of the house, but she'll manage that. Come on. How are you doing, Catherine? That's a budget, Donald. At least the cleansing department won't be able to report us to higher authorities. <laughs> don't be too sure. We don't have union cards for this kind of work. It's no joke, Donald. Oh, believe me, I'm serious. I don't think Tom realizes just what he's stirred up. Uh, I told Peggy to let him know if things get really bad, he can have rooms at the hotel. You mean you think he's ruined the tourist trade? Maybe he's the making of it. With a spa closed? Ah, you can buy spa water anywhere in the world. But there's very little truth on offer today. Kate! Kate, my darling Kate, we have it all sorted. Here is the battlefield. Was, you mean? And it looked like it before we tidied it all up. Is and always shall be. We're going to start our own school. This is my native place. Beginning with the backward kids. We shall teach them nothing, Captain. No facts, Peggy. No predetermined values, Catherine. They shall grow up as free and independent men. What do you think the school board is going to say to us? I it? shall preach in season and out of season, as it says somewhere. Well, surely to goodness you saw last night that preaching doesn't do you any good. To hell with the school board. I just want to bang it into every idiot's head that democracy is the craftiest enemy of free men. Why it can strangle any promising young truth at birth, even before it's born. Majorities of fools can turn justice and morality upside down until life isn't worth living. I think I should be able to explain that to quite a few folk, don't you, Captain? Probably, Tom, but you know me, I don't know an awful lot about it. Ah, of course. My main trouble is going to be finding someone with enough independence and integrity to carry on my work after me. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, you've got all the time you'll need, Dad. It's the leaders. They must be wiped out. They are like ravening wolves. They have to feed on a certain number of small creatures every year in order to keep themselves going. I mean, look at Peter and Houston and Geeky. See all the poor wee craters that they polish off year after year or else mangle and maim until they're fit for nothing except to be members of the electorate and subscribers. My God, subscribers to the Beaky Advertiser. I have made a great discovery. Oh, no. Save us from that. I am the strongest man in the world. Oh, God help us. Right. But say nothing. Not yet. You see, the fact is, I am the strongest man in the world. Dad? The strongest man in the world is the man who is most alone. 